welcome to Health Assessment this semester. My name is Carolyn Merriman. I'm the coordinator of Health Assessment, and I'd like to welcome you to your first lab and also to the College of Nursing. We're very excited that you're here. You've worked very hard to get here, and this is your first considered clinical experience. So on behalf of all the faculty, um, welcome. I would like to go over a few lab protocols with you and then take you right into your first skill, which is exciting that you're going to have hands-on even in your first lab. A um, couple protocol things I want to go over with you is that since we are entering into the world of nursing and at a lab laboratory setting, we want to um, emulate professionalism. So. Um, as you come into the lab, there are some expectations that would be expectations as you enter into the world of nursing with your first job. We expect you to be prepared for lab. Um, be prepared. Do your assignments before you get here and make sure that you do your ATI assignments as well as any readings. We want you to bring um, your textbook, your textbook, as well as your lab manual. You bought both of these things, they will be very useful to you in the lab set setting. And your lab manual is actually what you'll be using for a documentation. Your book is what you'll be using to help you go through systems and understand exactly what is expected in this course. As we talked about in class, your job is to learn a lot about health assessment so that you'll be competent when you get to the bedside of any patient and you'll be able to transfer those skills to any patient, whether they're old or young. Um, and so that's what our goal is for you, is to be competent as well as comfortable with a head-to-toe health assessment. Um, I would like to just remind you of a couple of things. Do your preparation. Get to lab on time. You don't want to be tardy because those can add up and count towards um, unexcused absences. So be here on time and stay the whole time. Every You only have two hours in lab and it's really important that you get the full benefit. So don't leave early because you'll miss something and also we expect you to be here the whole time. Um, the, the d way the lab is going to run is that you're going to have um, a few minute video clip from me um, or another faculty talking about the goals of the day or demonstrating the skills. So today, for instance, I will be demonstrating your vital sign skills um, and how to do those exactly. Then after the video clip, you're going to have a few minutes, 10 minutes or so, to ask any questions and get any further explanation for faculty. So that's the second thing on the agenda. Then you will um, get a partner within the class and you will practice whatever the skill is for the day with your partner. Um, at, during that time while you're practicing with your partner, you're going to be going in and out of the simulation lab to also have a focused simulation experience. At the end of the lab, the last approximately half hour, we are also going to integrate the skills you're going to need for um, documentation. So all of you will come back and document whatever the skill was and the, the write-up for the day. So that is kind of the order of things. Um, so just wanted to give you kind of an overview of that. It is important not only that you be on time and you stay the whole time, but that you come prepared with your equipment. Each of you will be um, distributed a gown, and that gown is yours for the whole semester. We expect you to bring it to every lab and wear it during your lab, per, your lab practice. We also expect each of you to be um, in uniform by at least the, um, uh, you've got two weeks to get your uniform, so you will be buying the Blue Seal uh, uniform scrubs. We also expect each of you to purchase a blood pressure cuff, a stethoscope, um, and the other lab equipment that's outlined in your syllabus. It talks about a pen light, um, a watch, and um, a centimeter ruler. So bring that with you every time along with your books and then you'll be fully prepared. Um, if there's any other uh, questions that you have, please ask your faculty and look in your, um, in, in your syllabus as well. The course manual is your uh, guidelines for each week. And so we'll talk about the skill. You'll have something in your course manual that will help you, um, your course packet that will help you identify how to do the skill or give you some guidelines for that. So just wanted to give you that information. Remember that the lab is um, 
used by many people, so we want to treat it with respect. And just reminders, after your lab, um, you're going to clean up your space. No shoes on the lab, no food or drink in the lab as well. Um, there will also be some specific guidelines for simulation. Uh, Ms. Wexler will tell you that there's, there's no ink pens allowed because it, it can damage the mannequins. Um, and there's also no electronic devices. So we're working together to keep this lab in, in tip-top uh, shape so that everyone can use it. Um, there'll be some further directions by your faculty, but I wanted to again just welcome you and let you know that we're excited to be part of your journey this semester. Thank you. I would like to demonstrate now how to do the vital signs skills, um, and this will be how you will do it when you check off um, with your faculty. So. Um, I'm going to go ahead and start and get into the role. I may be explaining some things to you as well, but also talking with the patient. All right, and I'm going to begin by coming in the room. Yes. Hello. Hello. My name is Carolyn Merriman, and I'm going to be your nurse today. Um, I am going to need to check your uh, height and your weight, and also check your blood pressure, your pulse, and your respirations and your temperature. Um, would that be okay? Yes. Okay. Would you please tell me your full name? Lita Jones. Okay, Ms. Jones, um, I want to show you that I'm washing my hands, so I'm going to use the sanitizer here. So your name is Lita Jones. What would you like me to call you? Lita's fine. Lita. Okay. I, I need to check your armband just to verify. Okay. Lita Jones. And can you please tell me your uh, date of birth? 12-28. 1956. Okay, 1228, 1956. Thank you so much. Okay, well, what I would like to do uh, first is get your height and weight. So we're going to have to take a little walk over to the um, to the scale, if that's okay. Mm -hmm. All right, you okay? No dizziness or anything? Mm, I feel fine. All right. So we're walking over here to the scale. Let me first of all, if you don't mind stepping right here for a second, I just want to make sure that the scale is balanced. It looks like it's balanced because the, um, the end of it is in the middle and it's not touching the top or the bottom. So now I would like to um, help you on the scale, make sure, are you dizzy or anything? No, I feel fine. Okay. Would you take your shoes off for a minute, please? Let's get your weight. Let me make sure it's moving okay. All right, that's in the center. All right. And I'm going to have you step down for a second. All right. And now what I'd like to do is I'm just going to raise this up above your head. And now I want to get your height. So can I help you turn around towards the facing the other way, please? OK. And I'm going to bring this down straight. Look straight ahead. All right. And I've got, I've got it now. Can you step down? And where I'm going to read that is right here. So you are five feet, there's one, two, three, right at five feet, four inches. All right, and so I am going to record those two things. I will be calculating that in a few minutes. Five feet, four inches, 185 pounds. Okay, thank you so much. All right, you are, are you doing all right? Mm -hmm. All right, I'd like to take your temperature next. Have you had anything to eat or drink or had a cigarette in the last 15 minutes? No. If you had had something to eat or drink, then I would have had to wait approximately 30 minutes before I would have taken it. It's 98.6, you are just exactly on target. Now what I would like to do is to take your pulse. And, and um, so I'm gonna just um, take it here. It's uh, by the thumb is the radial pulse. Do you, you want to put your arm up here just to be more comfortable? Oh, thank you. You're welcome. I found the pulse and it's regular. If I were grading it, I would grade it two plus, which is a normal grading. Since it's regular, I'm going to count it for 30 seconds. So I know what it is for, for that amount of time. Um, what I want to do now is I need to check one more thing. Side note to you as students is that I'm not going to tell her I'm going to be checking her respirations. So when it says that you s go to the original place, you're going to let your patient know that you just need to check one more thing and keep your fingers over the radial pulse, but you're actually assessing respirations. Um, so I need to check one more thing. So I'll be uh, counting again. 
Thank you so much. Her respirations were regular. You'd have to look to make sure that. So um, the, um, um, since they were regular, I went ahead and counted them for 30. But if as a new uh, student, you might want to go ahead and count them for a full minute. All right, so I've got your pulse, your radial pulse, and your respirations are fine. What I'd like to do now is check your blood pressure, okay? I want the table to be about at your heart level. So have you had your blood pressure taken before? Yes. And what does it usually run? About 126 over 76. Okay, 126 over mm -hmm. 76, okay. Would you mind uh, uncrossing your legs, please? I see that they're crossed and just keep your feet flat on. Would you put your hand up here on the table? So I'm going to just roll your sleeve up. And this is an adult size cuff, so I'm just making sure that it's about two thirds of your arm. All right, well, let me just first make sure I know where I'm going. On the pinky side is really where towards the patient if their hands are up is where you're going to find the brachial artery. And that's where I'm going to put the diaphragm of my stethoscope. All right, so I see that I can feel it. And I'm gonna put the blood pressure cuff. There's the artery arrow, and I'm gonna put that over the artery, the brachial artery, tightening it and smoothing it. You can sometimes tuck things. Okay, that's perfect. Are you comfortable? Mm -hmm. So I'm tightening towards the patient. I'm tightening towards the patient. Here's my stethoscope and I'm going to use the round part which is called the diaphragm. These ear pieces are going in towards my ears. Checking it. It's on there. Brachial pulse again. That's better. Okay. Oh, it's kind of going crazy. All right. Now what I'm going to do is pump up, and you said 126, right? Yes. Well, I'm gonna go about 156, about 30 above that, 20 to 30 above, and then I'll let it out slowly. Letting it out slowly, listening for that hurt first sound. Letting it out slowly, just turning the crank towards me. don't want anything to touch. Okay. And I absolutely could not hear a thing, so I'd like to do it again if that's okay. Okay. So since I didn't hear a thing, I let out all the air and now I'm just letting her arm rest about 15 seconds to 30 seconds to make sure that the arteries have time to let the, the blood recirculate. Did that hurt you at all? No. Okay. Can I try it on the same arm again? Mm -hmm. That'd be fine. Okay. Pumping it up after I've tightened it towards her, letting it out slowly. Okay, I heard the first sound at 112 and the last sound at about 68, 112 over 68. So it's a little bit lower than what you had thought. Um, so once you hear the top sound and go down slowly to hear the second sound, then you let all the air out and then take it off your, your patient. You okay? Mm -hmm. Is that a good blood pressure? Yes, it's, it, it's within the normal limits that they would say. So 112 over 68. All right, well, um, um, I need to do one more thing, and that is to check your oxygen level. And let me see where it is here. Here it is. Awesome. It's connected to this machine. So this is just going to tell how well your, your blood is oxygenated. And this does not hurt. It's just like a little clip. You don't have any nail polish on. Mm -mm. Your fingers are a tiny bit cold, but we'll see how if it picks it up. All right. So let's 
see how that does. So your oxygen level is at 99%, which is a very good level. This is also showing your heartbeat. I had gotten um, 74 and it's at 75, 76. So you are at 99% oxygen level. And um, are there any other questions you might have right now? No. Well, I'm completed finishing your vital signs. And if there's any other questions, please let me know. Thank you so very much. Thank you.